we went to the range a couple of days ago and uh, so a lot of things happened between then and now so we took the Metro Arms American Classic Commander it is clear by the way both of those are clear um, to the range and we've been doing it the last few range visits because the thought was that there's something wrong with this gun whether it's the sights or whatever right uh, then in the last range visit I was reviewing my shooting uh, footage for the camera here uh, I like to I guess uh, review footage to make sure I'm following the proper uh, marksmanship fundamentals and I saw that I may have been jerking the trigger I called it flinching in the video in the last video it wasn't flinching uh, and so I went back to the range and here are the targets here and again excuse my table here half of it's dusty uh, but anyways um this is what we shot and compare this to my other video footage where I was shooting very low left here and I wasn't even close to the bullseye uh, this is at five yards because again we're working on fundamentals and you don't need to be shooting at 20 25 yards or even half that while working on fundamentals uh, so this was a little bit better than last range visit and you know I'm, so I'm, you know with these shots I'm kind of working out what I need to be doing so I ensured that the sight alignment was proper and I was trying to pull the trigger correctly and you know as you can see here there there is some improvement there right then with the last batch of magazines we're actually touching the bullseye and yes we're still hitting low left especially here and in this batch here but for the most part uh, this issue I guess my my claim that there's something wrong with the sights or something wrong with the gun has been debunked this is the most accurate I've ever been with this particular gun um, and in fact with the last mag um, the, the mag didn't uh, lock back the slide and so I thought that I still had ammo in the gun and so I pulled the trigger and so yes I I, I still kind of pulled to the not sure if it was low left it I saw the muzzle dip but it wasn't it wasn't nearly as bad as in the last video uh, so uh, so this is promising this is good so that means that there's nothing wrong with this gun there's nothing wrong with the sights or anything like that uh, so now what we're gonna focus on is the fact that we need to put more rounds through this and I'm thinking on just swapping out the grips here because they're still kind of soft um, this particular handgun even though the frame is steel it's not as hefty as my other 1911s of this size um, so some of that recoil is making it to my hands and I'm having problems with that so um, I could strengthen my hands but I I'm, I'm developing arthritis so uh, there's only so much I can do in, in that department um, I'm, an, I'm an older person I'm not elderly but uh I do have issues with uh, with my hands and joints so uh, I will be looking at getting some more grip panels for the gun um, as well during this range visit two things happen this side the screws work themselves loose and I can feel the panel moving in my hand so I had to stop what I was doing and screw those tight uh, as well when I got home and I was looking over the gun I saw that this set screw here that holds the the uh, rear side in place it was almost all the way out uh, so we screwed that back in as well but what I need to do is I need, I need to take these off take the screws out take that screw out degrease and then put thread locker on all of those and tighten them back down but yeah so so we no longer are, are looking for 
sights. I wouldn't mind a set of adjustable sights, but it's no longer uh, a necessity to kind of change those sights out. So let's put this to the side. Um, let's put this over here. We took this to the range as well. And the reason we took this was to kind of compare the way, I guess, my my target results between the two guns. So this is an XD45 subcompact. Um, they both shoot a 45 ACP. And I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that although I was having problems with this, this wasn't, this really wasn't an issue of me uh, being... Uh, unused to 45 ACP because I shot this at five uh, five yards as well and look at that a whole different story so so uh, you can barely see any red there um, and there's this as well I think this is how I was shooting so these were rapid fire and you can see I'm slapping the trigger but uh there no so there's that uh, a couple other things we decided to get this box of ammo this is a uh, 10 millimeter and we got this from the range because it has been um, I guess finding 10 millimeter ammo locally has been a, a challenge for me and so I saw this and I bought it and it was 42 bucks for this box of 50 so it's rather expensive um, but I went ahead and picked it up anyway. So now we have a little bit more of a 10 millimeter stash um, there. Let's put this to the side. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Um, so part of this is nine millimeter as well. And I do believe you can see a difference in the round. So that one's thick this one's thin that's that's nine millimeter there's a couple other nine millimeters in here uh where are those coming from the guy that was sitting in the stall next to me he had a canic uh a large frame canic uh, he said it was an sf so i don't know if it was a canic uh, sfx uh it had a red dot um and it had a freedom smith trigger and he wanted to show me the trigger because I heard him and a guy next to him talking about Canics and I chimed in because I was carrying one and it's a new gun and so we started talking about he's like well he's like have you changed out the trigger and I'm like I've only had it a couple of months and I'm not usually one for changing triggers uh, not needed you know and I kind of told him I was like well they're pretty good out of the box already right and so and so he uh he gave me uh, his gun and I dry fired it and I was like oh my god I was like yeah that Freedom Smith trigger is actually really nice I'm not sure which type he had uh, because there's there are different types but what happened was uh, he actually gave me a, a mag and he loaded it up and said he'll try it and uh, yeah here I am shooting on top of that and I was pretty accurate so you know now I'm kind of like I'm ready to kind of delve into that red dot uh, option um, because my elite subcompact actually has a you know it's it's cut for an RMR so uh, I might look into that soon uh, but I'm also looking into uh, trigger upgrades, not for the, the Elite SC, but more for my my TP9 SAs. And I went to Freedom Smith's website and I saw that they no longer support TP9 SAs, which is really sad. I'm not ready to get rid of those guns, so I'll just keep using them as range toys with you know their stock triggers. Or maybe look for some other aftermarket uh, uh, vendors uh, for uh, triggers for canics. Um, so there's that. Um, 
to the left here my sister sent this as a Christmas present so I didn't tell her I was looking for 10 millimeter ammo but she gave me three boxes of federal premium 200 grain this looks to be SD ammo and when you open it up you see that it is so this is great and it looks like it's bonded I'm pretty sure it's bonded if I read and do some research in it so this is this probably set her back a decent amount because she got she got me three boxes so that's 60 rounds so I will be putting this in the safe and just for sh I mean just put it in the safe for shits and giggles if I need it it's there um, and she bought me that and that is M855 green tip I just wanted to make sure that there you go so that means I, I go to an indoor range that's definitely that's definitely not allowed uh, if I take it to a range such as they're not gonna let me shoot it at um one of the other outdoor ranges that are nearby here but there is one that's a little bit further away maybe an hour or so away where they have uh, steel and paper targets and I don't necessarily need a steel target because I know it'll damage it uh, so these are pen penetrator uh, rounds so they're not armor piercing but they will go through car doors and things like that uh, they're, uh, if you need to shoot through glass and things like that doors um anything reinforced probably not but uh it, it does penetrate a lot better than some of the the sd ammo and some of the other uh uh variants of uh five five six that are out there um so i mean we can stash that in our in our ammo cabinet and have that available but we just gotta remember we can't take it to the range they will check for this but I don't want to end up damaging their backstop and then there's a fire hazard because of sparking and things like that as well so uh it's cool that she did that but I have to kind of watch how I use it um but that is basically it that's all I wanted to talk about uh if we I'll review the footage here and see how it looks in 440 uh, 1440 and if it looks like crap then we'll redo the video but I have a feeling it should be fine it doesn't look all that well in my uh, in my view here but what's going to matter is how it looks when reviewing it on the desktop all right bye bye